Right, um, this is especially for you that's in 511A family. Um, I'm not calling you family, um, I'm just saying it's the family unit. Um, so there's a few, uh, few therapists and therapies that's mentioned. Um, we've got Virginia Satter, um, we've got Bowen, we've got Brown. Brown is the feminist, um, feminist uh, theory. Um, so, uh, but the, the most common used one, and that, this is the one that's most proven to work. There's mo most research is done on them, there's most um, results shown um, in research is, is Bowen's family, um, it's called Bowen's family therapy. So, um, you'll, you'll, know, you'll get to know a lot about Bowen when you do family. Um, so, it's just... A, but behind um, a bit of the research, so between 1913 and 1990, Barry Bone lived and um, he created this um, thing called Bone's Family Therapy. And um, there's different levels of maturity within relationships. So he got to, to, when you work with a family system, you look at the different levels of maturity. So you'll have, sometimes you'll have an adult person who will whose maturity level is that of a child, and you can have a child who's got an adult maturity level. So um, <clears throat> it's not about your age that determines your level of maturity. Um, so, so we don't, okay, and it's not funny. It's the truth. It's the truth, Ruth. <laughs> so, so I noticed patterns of managing anxiety in families that were similar to in, in instinctive ways other species dealt with threats um, in their herds of packs. So Bowen had this, he realized that, that we as people deal with it, almost like, like animals deal with, with being threatened. Um, they form groups, they form packs, they form alliances. It's almost like being on, on a stranded, on an island of survival. Um, you're forming an alliance with someone. So in your counseling therapy, you'll have the family, and suddenly in your family therapy, you'll realize that there's an alliance. Um, maybe between mom and son, or mom and dad against the children or that the, you'll find these alliances so um which is it's it's a natural thing we are people that do that i mean put a few people together in a room for five days and you'll find the, the alliance as i discussed you um, when we did the thing on um, community zero community a real community um, we mentioned that people form <coughs> alliances um, normally so even in a relationship, you'll find, if you want to watch a soap opera, <coughs> uh, let's say you watch Home and Away, um, you will find that there's alliances in families, in family groups. Um, you'll have the brothers forming alliance against the other family, and there'll be a fight and whatever. That's <coughs> Last time I watched Home and Away, that was how it was, which was um, before the plane crash. So. Um, okay, so Bowen's concept of differentiation of self <coughs> forms the basis of a system understanding of maturity. So differentiation of self means that every person is also different. Every person is unique. Um, every person comes into this, this therapy, into this family unit as, as different. Um, the other day when we did um, Sato's um, concept of family sculpting, um, we talked about this, um, that each person, where that where are they placed within the family structure, within the family unit? Um, so <coughs> with this is, each person is unique. Each person sees the situation that happens in the family as different. Um, two kids might not have the same idea what's happening um, in the relationship between mom and dad. Or, um, so it's like, you need to acknowledge that each person is different. Um, Bone proposed that the best way to grow a more solid self was in the relationship that make up our original family. Running away from, diff from a difficult family <coughs> would only add to the challenges. So if you've got this whole family and there's one member in this family that's really, really difficult. <coughs> Normally we find um, that person is sometimes the key to the issue in the family. So you'll have this, uh, maybe, a, maybe it's a, the, the family issue is about it one of the siblings that's causing issues, the difficult member. But again, the counseling is also about the whole family. So it's how the whole family will respond, how the family reacts, 
So this is part of it. It's like each person is unique. Each person is an individual, but they're also part of the group. So um, when you do the counseling of the group, as Bowen said, um, don't run away from the difficult family member. So, so this person is difficult, so we're sort of going to ignore him, or we're going to ignore her. We're going to focus a bit more on the easier ones, the ones who's not challenging, who's not speaking challenging language. Who's, so in your, your, your family unit, you need to address the whole family system, all of them. Right, Bones theory doesn't focus on mental illness. Right, so it does not focus on mental illness, um, but on the challenges of being human in the relationship, which affects us all. So it, it's not about your PTSDs and, and ADHD. Okay, and, and sometimes also be careful that when you get to a counseling room and you've got your clients, they will use that as excuses. Um, oh, he's got ADHD. Oh. People also talk about labels, my ADHD son, or my son, he's got ADHD. I don't care. I mean, it's not his identity. A person's illness is not the identity. So don't go around and say, this is my son, he's got ADHD. Um, it's like, my normal reaction is incites me, so what, who cares? Um, uh, you can call me Bowen. Uh, I don't care about your, normal, your mental illness, I care about you as a person. So, so you've got this problem, but who are you as a person? And this is what Bowen is doing in this thing is, I don't care about your mental illness. I don't care about those things. I want to know your, your position in the family, where you fit in, and how I can help you to be part of this family and make this family work. Right? Remember, family counseling is about the family. <laughs> okay? It's not individual counseling. So if you've got the, the person with the mental illness in the family, the focus is not to fix the person with the mental illness. The focus is to help this whole family operate. Mm -hmm. right? Help this whole family to not be a dysfunctional family. Although I think that every family is dysfunctional to a degree. Okay, our dysfunction is just a bit, a bit stranger, but, but I think every, function, every family runs a different way. If you look at my family, you'll say, good grief, they're dysfunctional. Um, but it's okay if I look at yours, I'd say, whoa, I'm glad I'm not in that dysfunctional family. Uh, so it's like every family is like weird, and that's great. That makes us human, because we're all only human. Right, so um, these ideas invite us to see the world through the lens of each family member. So as a counselor, try and see the world from each family member. See how they see things. So one thing that Bowen does is, one of his techniques that he uses, and this is one thing that I want you to do when we do family prac. If you don't do this, you might not get a tick next to this box because it says you must do the genogram. Right, so we'll spend some time later on, on not today, but on genograms. Um, so Bones got this genogram where he draws a picture of your family. Um, it always it helps to draw a picture of of family if you've got also uh, can add grandparents and great grandparents. It just helps us to show a pattern. It shows if there's patterns of behavior happening, pattern of stuff's happening, and um, oh, it's repeating itself. So, um, granddad was an alcoholic, dad was an alcoholic. Oh, you're an alcoholic. That's surprising. <laughs> it's like, it's just patterns. We just see the patterns when we do this. Okay. Right, so, granddad died of, of cancer, dad died of cancer. Oh. What's wrong with you? You know, it's like, it just shows us what's happening. Okay. <coughs> right, eight concepts are number one, triangles. Triangles is, um, we form triangles within the family. That means that basically what it is, the triangles are the, the different alliances also. Okay. Then we have differentiation of self, which is important that every person in the family is also different. So it's like you as a counselor do stuff like, you know, um, the use of yourself. Well, this one is you acknowledge that each member of your family that you're working with is different. And they act different, they think different, they see this process as different, they interpret, interpret things different. Okay? There's a nuclear family emotional system. Some families are just plain nuclear. <laughs> 
So it's about the emotions of what's happening, what's happening with people's emotions, and, and what makes it almost almost saying like explosive. Um, what what are trigger points to cause family fights and family arguments? So that's part of this process. Family projection. What do I project onto you? Um, it's like I've got an issue with with something, and I project that onto you. Um, I've got an issue with authority, so I project this issue of authority onto the parent if I'm a child. Um, what do you project onto other members in your family? Um, sometimes you project your own fears, your own anxieties, your own depression, you project it onto two members. Okay. Multi-generational transmission process. What's happening in the, in the different generations, the different so what's what's going on there in in, in the in your family? Um, because family consists of generations. Um, that's part of your genogram. You see, you look at your genogram, and you can see what's happening, um, what's repeating itself in the family system. Where are we going with what's happening in the next generation? Okay. So you were a teenager when when you were a teenager, you did this. Your son's a teenager. Oh dear, he's doing this too. Um, it happens in in the, in your family. Uh, emotional cutoff where we start to be not feel anything for each other. Like <coughs> I've emotionally cut off from my sister. It's like I don't really feel anything for her. I don't really <coughs> care about her. It's like if she's next to the road with a broken car, I'll drive past and I'll laugh at her. <laughs> That's what I was talking the other day in the counseling session. <laughs> So it's not funny, it's the truth. So, so it's like what's happening, it's like, at least he's not saying if she's lying, lying <coughs> dead next to the road, I'm going to drive past her. But this is what I heard, emotionally cut off. I'm cut off, I don't really feel anything for you. Sometimes it happens between parents, where, um, because a lot of the, most of our counseling is going to be related to what stuff that people said, either in the past or went through things that people did to each other. And some of those things mean I'm cut myself off emotionally. A lot of those stuff is not because I want to. I do that because I want to protect myself. So um, within the family, you're going to have that. And also respect that. Um, don't go, no, you should love every member of your family. Yeah, you should. But the truth and the reality is it doesn't happen always. Okay, so just be, be aware of that. Um, sibling position, where are the siblings? And, and some of you have done that exercise in earlier um, works, earlier um, assessments. Who's influencing who? Like um, sister gets her information from mother and that sort of stuff. Who are the siblings and what's their position and how does that position influence them? Um, again, Steve Badolf's books are great in this regard um, about sibling position. Um, where are they? What, how do they act towards each other? Um, sometimes they don't really share the love. Um, so, uh, and then uh, societal emotional process. Also, what, what influence does the society have on your family system? What's happening with your society? What's happening around you? How does that influence the family? Um, if they are in a very in a society that's maybe a low income society. Um, how's that affecting the family? Um, do they think low income, low social income? Do they think if it's a low moral area, do they, how does that influence their morals? How does society influence the family system? Um, so all those things you need to take into consideration when you are counseling your family. Right. Triangles. Pamper extend beyond the diet. Dyadic level, the idea of triangles within the family or triangulation is one of the more robust theoretical concepts. Okay, triangles, we've talked about it, is we form alliances. It's our alliances in size. It's like we've got this family and we, you and you work together against you and you, that sort of stuff. There's triangulation happening. Um, so you'll find out, you'll find it quickly in your, in your counseling process who's aligned with who. Um, and who's against who, and who are fighting against who in this family concept. But that's part of triangulation. So you'll find out who is who. Who's who in this family zoo? 
who are they and who rules and who's scared of who, what's going on. It's part of this process. Okay. Um, coming from my family, it was a bit difficult to become a triangle because we were a triangle. We were three people. So, so uh, but look in your family, where does your alliances lie? Um, right, the three, that's, uh, we've discussed this earlier, everyone is different. Acknowledge that in your family, um, nuclear, people's attitudes and beliefs about relationships play a role. How, how do they see relationships? How do they see family? As I said earlier, what influences their emotions? Um, what can make them really upset? What can cause chaos in, in this family concept? So it's all in there. Okay, so, so that's part of stuff Bowen does. Um, the relationship patterns. It's not ABBA. <laughs> Mar marital conflict. So um, we all know that there's conflict within the marriage. Um, so this is some of the relationship patterns in your family. Is this, there's a conflict in the marriage. Mom and dad, there's conflict. You're coming to this thing and they oppose each other the whole time. Um, those of you that watched uh, the, mini the series uh, we focused on a while ago uh, in treatment, when we talked about the counseling of the little boy, we have the mom and dad who's in the process of divorce, kid lives with the dad a while, and then he lives with the mom a while, so that's, they've got joint custody, and mom and dad's in conflict. Every time they, remember if you watch the movie, every time they come to the counseling room, there's conflict between mom and dad. Um, so this is one of the patterns, is that your family will have conflict, or there's conflict in the marriage, um, and then they sort of, against it and no matter what you say as a counselor one of them will not agree if the other one agrees the other one will disagree um, even if it's a right idea dysfunction in one spouse so one spouse pressures the other to think and act in certain ways and the other yields to the pressure so these two are there and it's sort of normally in normal cases, the husband is the one that rules, and um, sometimes the wife doesn't really, is not allowed to have an opinion. Um, so he forces her to talk. So um, sometimes it's good to split up your families a bit, have a bit of a chat to the one and then to the others. So if you can be creative in your counseling room anyway, you don't always have to see all of them at the same time. Okay, as long as somewhere in this session. And you can break it up and say for 10 minutes I'm going to speak to each one of you. Um, and in the end we all to talk together, that's why. Right. So just to make sure that, be aware that beware if there's conflict between the, the spouses, your results might be different. If one of them is focusing um, his or her authority on the other one, and your, your result will again be different. <coughs> Impairment of one or more children. Spouses focus on their anxieties on one or more of their children. So focus their anxieties on one or more of the children. So, so they sort of focus on the children. Uh, they don't really want to speak about the real issue in the marriage or in their family, but they focus on him or her. My kid this, my kid that, or since he arrived, since he was born, since she did this. Since, so there's, all their anxieties are focused on one person. So. So almost scapegoating the one person for the, the situation in the family. So just be, um, be aware of that when you get into that. And emotional distance. The pattern is consistently associated with the others. People distance from each other to reduce the intensity of the relationship. At risk becoming too isolated. So distancing. That's part of a lot of family issues is people distance each other. They, smoke, they break the connection. Um, beware of that in a family. Um, you might have mom, dad, two kids, and one of the kids will be this kid will be emotionally dis dis disengaged with the family. Um, so you need to try and identify this this distancing um, within the the why is there an emotional distance? Why is there this conflict within within the group? So um, so that's just a few basic um, patterns that um, that. Bowen have identified. Um, some of them can also be, a, not only, you can also use them in relationship counseling, not only 
um, like if there's there's one person is ruling and the other person needs to answer according to that person in your relationship counseling that can also play a role or distancing can play a role so Murray Bowen is great um, his, his way of think, seeing things are just some of them is just common sense but as we always say that common sense is not that common um, so uh, just be aware of these things in your in your counseling room Family projection. Um, the projection process is the parent focuses on a child out of fear that something is wrong with the child. The parent interprets the child's behavior as confirming their fear, and the parent treats the child as if something is really wrong with the child. So if they think the child's got something wrong, they the kid reacts a different way, and it's like, oh, really, there's something wrong with my child, and then they treat this kid as if there's something wrong. Um, one of our family members, um, the lady, suffers from Munchausen syndrome, um, <coughs> which is um, Munchausen is the one where you get sicknesses and you love medical attention, and you would do stuff to yourself so that you get medical attention. Um, I've never seen anyone that had so many operations in their life than this lady. Uh, if a doctor just mentions we need to do an operation, she said yes, and signs a consent to go for the operation. Um, it's just, um, and all her kids, the strangest things was done to her kids, from making, having operations to let them go, be made taller, and all sorts of things she did because of the Munchausen that she's, she's actually got. Um, and she loves, just love the attention, either the attention that she gets, or the attention that she gets when her kids are sick. Um, so, so this is almost the same as this projection thing. That they, they project stuff onto the kids. Um, my kid walks a bit different. I think she's got a walking disability. We need to take her in. And unfortunately, not all medical practitioners are as, as ethical as they're supposed to be. And it's an opportunity sometimes to make money. Um, so just. This lady is really, really like, I've never heard so many times getting messages like she's going to go for an operation again. Uh, so be aware of this projection thing. Right. <coughs> Multi-generational transmission. Uh, the combination of parents actively shaping the development <coughs> of the offspring, offspring in a respond to their parents' moods, attitudes, actions, long dependency period of human offspring. It's like we turn to become, we turn into our parents. Who of you are doing stuff that your parents did? Act the way your parents did. I mean the first time that I taught, I was like I had a teacher which I hated and she did always did this weird stuff. And um, I hated that because she's like coming to class and like she's standing there and like frozen and not saying a word till everyone is quiet and all these things and I absolutely hated it. The first week when I started teaching, guess what? I did that. <laughs> and I walked out and I'm like, oh, I've become her now. <laughs> I'm the beloved biology. My beloved biology teacher is reincarnated in me. So. Um, so we do stuff that's multi-generational. It's stuff that's transmitted, and we transmit this to our kids. Sometimes, like my kids do stuff, and like, oh, that's me. They shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I hope that thing will, would have died out, but that was my dad, and it's in me, and now it's in my kids. It's like, oh no, I'm transmitting stuff into the next generation. So just look at this. Look at kids' behavior in your group too. When you have this counseling with this whole group, some, sometimes you will see which kid follows the example of the dad, which kid follows the example of the mom. It's just by the, the, the behavior, the way they talk, the way they act. So um, multi-generational always be careful what you what you do in front of your kids, your kids will do that too. Uh, so okay, emotionally cut off, we talked about this one where I like I, I don't want to be involved in this. I cut myself emotionally. I don't feel um, I don't feel anything for you. I don't really care about you. I'm just cutting myself off emotionally from you. So, um, it happens in the best of families. Right, sibling position, we talked about it again, and it's really important. 
um, who fits in where. Okay, so um, just look at the family structure and where, where does your family people fit in. Um, and the emotional process we talked about, the genogram, we talked a bit about the genogram. Um, we'll focus a lot more, I'll do a workshop specifically on the genogram um, because it's quite complex and it needs to be in your family brack that you do. Um, there's a picture of the genogram. Um, so who's who in the Carl Vader Zoo? So, um, so there's all the family in the family structure genogram of Star Wars. So see there's Luke and his sister. And I had a child together. Yeah. So that's it. That's just a quick, very quick introduction to Bowen because we have the next session coming over. So you guys need to move to next door. Thank you. That was good. Thank you. Bowen. Thank you.